Moving on to the defense, uh, one of the big storylines that came out this week is uh, Le- Levi Onzerike. Um I don't want to panic, Jeremy, but it's starting to uh, – I think we got some optimistic news today on, on an update about his injury. Uh, but I don't know, man. Like, we, we were worrying about Josh Pascal, and I guess we should have probably worried about Levi and his availability. It's this is a part of the defensive line that up the center is we're kind of identifying as a weak point and Levi is struggling with injuries again. Yeah. I mean, I, there's, there's really been no updates on him since he, you know, I, I think we, we got maybe a brief, like, Oh, we're, we're just trying to be, you know, I think it was with him and TJ Hawkins. They both didn't show up in after Monday's practice on Tuesday. Yeah. I know Dan kind of, I, I think what I, when I called it positive, it was just, I think Rogers had ID as positive and says like, um, says they both got banged up a little bit on the pre on the previous day. So right. we're trying to be smart with both the guys. Yeah, that, so like he, he, da- he downplays it a bit. Right. But, but that, that was back on Tuesday and yeah. we haven't seen him since not, we haven't even seen him out there with the, the players, which it's not good. Usually if you're, you're ready to go, you're, you're stretching, you're, you're jogging, you're doing stuff like that. Now he could potentially be doing that all inside and, and just not want to be in, in the middle of it. But you, you, here's the thing. Even if Levi's going to be okay, even if Levi's going to be more than ready for week one, this is now the second training camp where he's missed a lot of time. He missed, remember, like he had the back hip injury, whatever it was last year, and missed like two, three weeks of training camp. Now he's missing at least one more week, and and he's not he's not out there doing the mental reps either. And this is a young player. This is a guy that they're banking on taking a year two jump. This is a guy that they have a lot invested in. He's a second round pick. And I, I don't know, man. Like I, I don't. We don't know what kind of injury is. We don't know if it, the, the back is flaring up again. We don't know if this is something completely new. All we know is there was kind of a a pile of bodies that fell during Monday's practice, and he was amongst them, and he was slow to get up. And if he's physically fine, great. But now he's missing a lot of time to hone in on his game, to to practice, to ramp up, and that's not good, man. And it's really not good to do it two years in a row, like he's not a guy that I trust that you can just throw out there without a month's worth of practice and be ready to go and firing on all cylinders in week one. He hasn't earned that level of trust for me. And so you can say all that, you know, he put in all the work to get physically ready and and to get his body ready and to, to kind of put the back injury in the rear view mirror. But if he's not getting the actual reps out there in practice, how am I to believe that he's going to be a better player? And so I am a little concerned. Yeah. I'm really concerned. I mean, for all the reasons that you just laid out, but the interesting thing is what we just talked about the running backs and Dan Campbell saying, Hey, the guys who have made the biggest jump from year one to year two have been Derek Barnes and Jamar Jefferson. Ask any lions fan before training camp. Maybe the name that you're most wanting to hear come out of Dan Campbell's mouth is Levi Onzerike. And he's, I mean, it, it doesn't matter if he, like you said, Jeremy, if he's physically ready, if he's not out on the field getting ready for the season, he's falling behind. And this is the second year in a row. So I'm really concerned about the guy. 